Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to um, Philippians study and devotion. Um, today I'm going to be doing Philippians uh, part 7. Um, this is going to cover Philippians chapter 3, the first 14 verses, and um, hope everybody's having a good week. Um, stay strong in the Lord. And look to the good things and have joy, just like Paul has taught throughout this whole chapter. Uh, really am enjoying this book. Had a great um, men's uh, small group meeting to earlier tonight. And uh, yeah, this is tonight. You'll get it tomorrow. But um, had a great me meeting with those guys and really enjoying that. <clears throat> if you're watching this and you haven't had a chance to get involved in that urge you to do so uh it's been a blessing to us um and thankful for everything that everybody's doing right now uh especially those that are digging in the word and doing these devotions and stuff too and thankful for a pastor as always um i shared tonight uh with our small group he's 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 my paul uh, that, that trains us up and, and leads us and guides us and thankful for him. Uh, thankful for Jason, Brett, Ron, John, uh, and everything they're doing to help out. So many people are doing a lot right now and making all the, the fire ground services, the drive in services, all that come together. And, um, just, just want to start out tonight by today by saying thankful for, for everyone that's doing all that, uh, behind the scenes too. So, uh, we'll get into Philippians here. Uh, part seven. This is chapter three, and um, I'm going to throw up the background slide that the pastor made. Uh, again, we're going to our key, our key verse here is Paul's writing this. We know he's writing it to the church at Philippi, and he's in he's in prison, and um, and he's 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 continuing to press to them to have joy, uh, and and all this that you see here it branches out from our from our key verse, and that's. Uh, Philippians 4.4, 4, uh, and he says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Um, and the application is is to have joy and rejoice in the Christian experience. And, um, you know, no greater time than right now that we need to focus on that uh, and having that joy. Uh, and the purpose of his letter when he's writing it back and telling them to have joys, Paul's letter is to relieve anxiety and to say thank you. Um, you know, he's, he's trying to, he's trying to uplift them and, um, what a, what a great, what a great way that he does this. And we're going to see it again tonight that again and again and again, he says rejoice. Okay. So let's get into it. Philippians 3, 1 through 14. If you're going along with us in our, uh, U version Bible app, it says the title of this devotion was joy in Christ righteousness. Um, there is joy in that and nothing else. And there's some things here that the writer of the devotion uh, brought forth that that really stuck out. And I wanted to put those up here on the screen in case you don't get those. Or you haven't read it yet. Um, and, he, and he asked the question in there at the very start of it. Where do you find your significance? Where do you find your approval? Where do you find your acceptance? Where do you find your security? When things when things hit hard. Um, and, and you're really in a tight spot and things are just seem like they're so down and out. Where do you find your security? Um, you know, I, I, I spoke a little bit, um, Sunday night in the lesson Sunday night about our teenagers and, and getting their, getting their, um, approval from God and, and no one else getting their approval from Christ and not what the world thinks and what the world tells them and finding their significance in Christ. And that's the same, same for us, right? So we need to do that too. And, and when we, when we fail, what restores our confidence? Uh, because if it's anything other than the righteousness found in Christ, um, that restoration that what we try to restore with is never going to last long. If that makes sense, it's never going to, it's never going to hold water. It's the broken cistern. It's, it's never going to stand up. Um, so that's, that's what we need to look to Christ. We need to look to Christ's righteousness, uh, to find those things, our significance, our approval, our acceptance, security, and in times when we need that security blanket. And when we fail, when we need restoration, it's only going to be found 
in Christ and in his righteousness, okay? Christ and his righteousness are our ultimate source of identity and significance. I'm going to read that one again. Christ and his righteousness are our ultimate source of identity and significance. Anything else, anything else, if you try to find it in anything else, you're going to sell yourself short. And we do. Okay, I do. We 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 get caught up in times where we try to find our identity in, in what we've accomplished or successes we've had, goals we've we've reached, uh, and we find the significance in others and the approval from others. And when we do that, we start losing the identity in Christ a little bit. It starts wavering, so to speak, and that's when it doesn't hold up for us. So look here in the, in the very first verse and this i've read this chapter a lot i've used this chapter in some messages before and it's really never stuck out to me like it did today in the very first verse and paul says finally my brethren rejoice in the lord rejoice in the lord he's saying it again right and he even says this to write the same things to you to me indeed is not grievous but for you it is it is safe Paul is saying, I'm saying again and again, I've got it here on the bottom of the screen. Rejoice, 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 but rejoice in the Lord. Nothing else. Um, make sure we're rejoicing in the Lord. And we'll go through some of these and we'll kind of break down the verses a little bit and try not to be too long. Uh, verse two, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. And he's talking to them. He says, rejoice and rejoice in the Lord. But beware of this, beware of the evil workers, beware of the Judaizers, the ones that's 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 out to 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 spread wrongdoing and to say say things aren't about Christ and it's not about this or that. But he says, be careful for that. Be be conscious of it. He says, For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit. And then look what he says, and we rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Everything we do. And when we worship, it's all about the Holy Spirit. It's all about Jesus Christ. And it's nothing in the flesh. Look what he says here in verse four. These are some great verses here tonight. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, Paul's saying, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath wor uh, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. If you, Paul is saying, if you think, that you trust in the flesh more, that you've done this more, you're going to boast in yourself. He says, I even more than that. And then he breaks it down like this. He gets into the verses here and he starts, he starts talking about his credentials. He says, circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. He's, he's saying, listen, I am a I am a true-blooded Jew here, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law. He says, with all that, I am blameless. I'm blameless. He says this. He goes down to verse 7. And this is where he, he, he starts He starts talking about all those things, all those credentials, all those things. He says, man, I can, I can boast in myself. Me more than anybody. You think you can? I, I can the more. And, and, and Paul is not being, um, he's not got a, on an ego trip here, or he's not um, cocky, so to speak, is the way we would word it, I guess, today. Paul is, Paul is trying to share with them. He's saying, me even more, I understand. I understand what you're going through, but me even more. I, I've, I've gained more. I've done more. I've accomplished more. He says here in verse 7, but what things were gained to me, man, right here. Those I counted loss for Christ. Those things that were gained for me were gained to me. Those I counted for loss to Christ. Verse eight, yea, doubtless, I count all things, all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung or waste. They're all waste. They, they, they mean nothing that I may win Christ. And notice here, he starts out in verse one and he's saying rejoice. And I'm writing the same thing to you again. And I'm telling you, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. All throughout this letter, I've been telling you to rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. 
Don't worry. Don't have doubts. And he says, all these things that I've done, all these credentials, all my successes, all the great things that I've accomplished, he says, all those things are waste. All of them is, is just waste. It's, it's pointless. If it doesn't bring me closer to God, question mark. I put that down there. I want you to ask yourself this on the bottom of my screen here. If it doesn't bring me closer to God, blank, what's it worth? What's it worth? Anything that we're doing, anything that we're trying to accomplish, if it's not bringing us closer to Christ, if it's not about spreading his word, if it's not about sharing the gospel, if it's not about seeing others come to Christ, if it's not about a service for our, our, our Lord, if it's not about a service for our brothers and sisters in Christ, if it's not, as, as the pastor said in, in the last devotional, if it's not the gospel friendship, if it's not those things and it's not bringing me closer to Christ, closer to God, what is it? It's it's just like Paul said, I count them but none. They're all waste. All that is waste. Paul gets even, even better here. I, I love where he's going here. Verse nine, and be found in him. Be found in him. Stop right there just for a second. Ask yourself today, am I finding myself in him? Everything that I'm doing, all my actions, my reactions, is everything that I say or do, is it about him? Is it showing me being found in him? Not having my own righteousness, Paul says, and be found in him. So it's one of the two, right? He says, if I'm found in him, then it's not about me. But if I'm not found in him, then I'm leaning on my own righteousness, which is not going to hold water. It's not going to stand up. He says, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. He says the righteousness is, is which is of God by faith. Look at verse 10. Very important here that I may know him, that I may know him. What is Paul saying right there? He's saying, I want to gain more knowledge of him, even me that I want to gain more knowledge of him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his offerings being made conformable unto his death. It's got to be a personal thing for me. Paul's saying it's all about the personal relationship that I may know him. Paul's knowledge, everything, listen, all our successes, everything we accomplish, everything that we lean on to, that we find our significance in and uh, our approval in and our to try to be restore our confidence in all those things they're only going to take us so far paul is saying the same thing paul is saying my knowledge all those credentials that i told you my knowledge can only take me so far so i need to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his offerings may be made conformable unto his death he says it's that important i need to know him it's got to be personal. I got to have more. So verse 12, Paul starts shifting gears here a little bit. Okay. My Bible titles this pressing towards the mark. Okay. And that's, that's, you know, we're, we're going to focus on the joy here, but I want you to see how that does bring joy. Verse 12, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. Paul says, I ain't attained anything and, I, and I'm not perfect, but this is what he says. And this is what we need to do. But I follow after. I follow after. I'm striving. The pastor talked the other day of finishing the course and he talked about him and, run, him and Emma running the race. Okay. I follow after. Paul, Paul gets over and says to Timothy, he says, I finished the course. I've kept the faith. But here he's telling them, but I'm going to follow after. I've not attained anything, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend for that which I also am apprehended of, of Jesus Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Catch this, all right? This one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth, trying to attain it, following after it, you got to reach out to get it. He says, reaching forth into those things which are before. To know Christ more, to have 
a relationship with him, forgetting those things which are behind us. How many of you are like me and you have trouble forgetting those things which are behind us? And I'm not talking about necessarily the goals, but what does it mean forgetting those things which are behind? All the credentials, all the successes, all the accomplishments, if they're not about Christ, then what? They're all loss. They're all loss. Forget those things. Paul's saying all those other things, I'm forgetting it. All the achievements, all the success. Paul's saying, I'm forgetting it. I'm reaching forward. I'm I'm reaching forward to the to the final prize here, to the finish line, to the to the end of the race, towards the prize. What about past mistakes and past guilt? That li- listen, if you're a Christian and you're watching this now, I'm guaranteeing you somewhere, somewhere along the line, and if you're like me, it happens a lot, but somewhere along the line, you let past mistakes and past guilt take hold of your confidence. You let it wear you down. You let it wear on you. And you let it get in the way of everything else that you're trying to accomplish. Let those past mistakes and the past guilt put those things to the to the back. Put them behind us. Paul says, I'm pressing on, and this is what he's doing. And I'm going to rejoice while I'm going. I'm pressing on, and I'm going to rejoice the whole time that I'm going. Verse 14, right here, sums it up. You want to have some joy? Press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's where it's found. That's where your joy is found, not in the righteousness of ourselves, not in trying to find the approval from others, but our joy is fine in pressing toward the mark for the what? I should have underlined that. Prize, for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Paul is saying here, I'm forgetting everything else. Everything else that, that I've accomplished, everything else that's passed, all my guilts. Listen, if you think you're having trouble, remembering your past guilts or your faults and your mistakes and putting those things behind you, man, man, listen here. What would happen to Paul if he couldn't put that behind? I mean, we we could spend the rest of the night here just talking about the bad things he done in his life leading up to that. Uh, you know, from, from persecuting the church to, uh, you know, standing by and holding the coats to the ones that they stoned. We've seen that and we've seen his his actions and the things that he done. And he turned out, no doubt, to be maybe the greatest pastor of all time in his leadership and what he done in forming the churches in his work and his service and everything that it set out to do. Man, that should fire us up to say, whatever I've done, I can put it behind me. I'm putting it behind me right now. And I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on. Uh, and I'm going to reach forward uh, for those things which are before We'll stop right there in uh, verse 14. I want to tell everybody tonight, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're battling. I don't know what you got to look forward to this week. Um, maybe you're maybe you're tired. Maybe you're worn down. Maybe you're a little bit discouraged. Uh, maybe you're still scared or nervous. Maybe you've got some doctor's appointments coming up. But I want to tell you, the same as Paul said here, He says, I'm telling you again and again and again, I want you guys to rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. We have so much. I played Andrea's song last night before service, and we have so much to thank him for. Uh, We are so blessed beyond measure of what God has done for us and what he's going to continue to do. Okay, we'll close out tonight or today. We'll close out in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for another day that you've given us. I thank you for all your many blessings. God, I pray today, Lord, as people are watching this video and they're starting their day or the middle of the day, wherever it's at, God, I pray right now that they would find joy and peace in you and strength and hope. God, I pray, Lord, that we're putting things behind us uh, that shouldn't be there, that are trying to weigh us down, that we're pressing on. Uh, We're forgetting those things and we're pressing on to know you, to gain more knowledge of you, to have a relationship with you that is stronger than it's ever been before. Father, we love you tonight and we thank you and we praise you for all that you've done. 
your, your blessings on us, Lord, are unmeasurable, unmeasurable, the things that we just take for granted each and every day. When we get up in the mornings and we can put our feet on the floor and have the very breath of life that you've given us, Father, we can say thank you. We can say thank you. And we don't know what the day holds. We don't know what the week holds. But I know who holds it. And I'm so thankful for that. God, I ask you to bless each and every home of our church family. God, I ask you to bless each and every leader. God, our teachers. So many, God, that are doing a work for you. God, maybe they don't get recognized by us all the time. Maybe someone doesn't always come up and, and pat them on the shoulder. But God, I pray that you pour out blessings upon them. The ones that are working for you and they have a heart for you and a service for your people. God, I pray you pour out your blessings on them like no time before. Let them feel your strength in your hand and your grace and your mercy each and every day more and more. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we praise you. I love you, Mount Olive Church family, and I'll see you soon.